How are you? I'm doing good. I'm really excited to be presenting. Yeah? Yes. Well, you, you, are, you are a very good presenter. I saw a little bit yesterday, Thank so you. they're going to love it. Have fun. Thank you. Winter is approaching. Time to think about flu shots. Last December, the flu started as any other year. It was a full-blown epidemic in less than two months. The problem is worldwide, and it is really serious. The flu causes millions of illnesses and billions in losses. Those are staggering numbers. I have caught serious flu several times. I had a 107 degree fever. While I was recuperating, I wondered, why did the vaccine not protect me? Can I do something that will make a difference? There's no cure for the flu. Worse, the one size fits all vaccine is effective only a quarter of the time. That is alarming. My solution, a personalized flu vaccine. Uflu uses DNA data to design vaccines. It is called reverse vaccinology, which is a groundbreaking technology. Uflu is built on a multidisciplinary core engine. It uses virology, immunology, genetics, coding, and a lot of math. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> This is a 3D printed model of the hemagglutinin protein. It is so tiny that you could fit a billion of these on a pinhead. It is on the surface of the flu virus. This is what makes us so sick. I spent the last two years working on it. So what's the secret sauce? The core engine of Uflu is a new invention. It works from two opposite ends, the forward progression of virus mutation and our immune system opposing it. It uses over 250 million nucleotides, over 100 years of data. Those are big numbers. The core engine is over 97% accurate in predicting the vaccine. I know my model works. Since starting this project, I've announced my vaccine in January. It has been a perfect match with the one the WHO and CDC announced in March. That is a resounding endorsement from a bunch of scientists. <laughs> Vaccines are the cheapest and most effective way of reducing mortality. The lack of medical professionals to administer vaccines is one of the biggest reasons preventing widespread vaccination. To solve this problem, I designed Medject. It is a follow-up to Uflu. Medject is a novel medicine injector that anyone can use. This is a 3D printed model of Medject. You load the cartridge, rest the injector against the muscle, press the lever, the needle pops out, injects the medicine, and retracts, even before you know it. So what's the technology behind Medject? Here I have a scaled model of what it would look like. Here is a uh, cutaway of the device sideways. These red arrows show the cartridge. As the hammer is pulled back by the lever, eventually the hammer is released, or the lever is pulled back so much that the hammer is released which injects the medicine. The needle is retracted by the spring on the right. I performed a force and stress analysis using 3D CAD. So I had, so I had tested the prototype even before I had built it. Next came the trip to my grandfather's workshop. He has the coolest toys. <laughs> and so these are some of the different tools I'd used in his garage. For my third step, I created a resin-based cast of the prototype. My objective was to create a product that can withstand extreme conditions, has a high strength to weight ratio, and can be used widely. The three products from 3M's Advanced Materials Division were perfect for that. So what's next? So on the Uflu side, my journey has been from core engine to vaccine prediction to Uflu. On the Medject side, it has been from 3D CAD to prototyping to casting. So uh, I plan to work with a hospital for Uflu. Simultaneously, I will look for a business partner for Medject. Here are some of my literature cited. I want to thank Dr. Ali, 3M, Discovery Education, Mr. Richard Short, and all my teachers at Moody Middle School. Thank you guys for your time.
Thank you, Cameron. That was a very, very passionate presentation. I really enjoyed it. Um, so my question is, did you get the chance to, like, test this on, I guess, actual patients, I would say, but any type of, I guess, dummy or something to kind of simulate it? <laughs> so uh, that's a great question. So the problem with testing it with, in a lab is that it costs a lot of money and a lot of materials that I don't have access to. So I did computer testing and also another way I tested it was that it matched with the one that the WHO and CDC use. And so they have all the materials to do all this lab testing. And I got the same thing with just a computer. Thank you. Thank you, Cameron. Very well done. I'm wondering, of the two parts of your project, you sort of had one that was computer-based and one that was sort of workshop-based, which one did you enjoy the most? So I liked them both. They were different kinds of fun. So I would, I'd say I'd like the UFLU side a little bit more just because it was more scientifically intense. I spent a lot of late nights doing that coding. And overall, it was really fun despite the, all the time I had to put in. The Medject one was a little bit more engineering based. And I like both sides. I want to be a biomedical engineer, so I have to learn to like both anyway. <laughs> Thanks, this is really cool. Hey, could you explain a little bit of that coding and, and what are you actually doing with the artificial intelligence to come up with a new uh, flu uh, vaccine? So with the coding, I use two data points, antigenic distance and phylogenetic distance. So the data I downloaded from NCBI's GenBank and GISAID, which are two databases, were sequences of the flu virus with the nucleotide sequences. So I translated those into protein using code and then once I had those protein sequences, I calculated the phylogenetic and antigenic distance. So the phylogenetic distance shows how closely related two strains are to each other, similar to like a family tree. So the further away two strains are, the less related. Just think about like, I'm less related to my fifth cousin than I am my sister. Similar concept with the flu. For antigenic distance, I used a substitution matrix, which weights di uh, how different amino acids substituted for each other affects the composition of the flu. And so I added each one of the coordinates up using coding. Um, so I added each of the scores for each coordinate and that, and that way I got my total antigenic distance. Cameron, what did you learn from collaborating with your 3M mentor? So uh, Dr. Ali was very helpful throughout the entire process. One of the uh, best things she did for me was suggest to do a market survey. So while I was working on Medject over the summer, um, she told me, oh, is there anything else out there like before? Is there anything that uh, other people have done that maybe you might want to think about how you can make that better? And so I did that, and it was really helpful. Cameron, considering how important herd immunity is to the effectiveness of vaccinations, can you tell us a little bit about the cost of U-flu for each individual using it? So U-flu would be, a, it would be a program that would go to the hospitals. And so once the hospitals have it, then they would give it to the patients. So the patients want to be paying for it themselves. And so since UFLU is uh, completely free, there'd be no cost for that side. Um, however, you might need some money to take like blood samples for the antibodies. And then for the Medject, uh, that, I also tried to make it under $25 to make it very easily, easily accessible to uh, underdeveloped areas. And so that wouldn't cost much money. Fantastic, thank you. Thanks, Cameron. Can you tell me a little bit more about how you use the ceramic beads and the glass bubbles from 3M? So the, ceram or the glass bubbles and the ceramic beads were, uh, I used them in the resin-based cast I had mentioned. So one of my objectives was to create something that had a high strength to weight ratio. So the glass bubbles, are may, they have air on the inside, so they're very light, and they're also somewhat strong. 
Um, the ceramic beads were a little bit heavier, but they were also a little bit stronger than the glass bubbles. So ultimately, I picked to use the glass bubbles over the ceramic uh, beads because it was more important to have that low weight. You did a great job. How do you feel? Uh, I feel great. That was really good. You know what I love? You, you, you had some good humor in there, too. You like working with your granddad? Yes, that was really fun. I got to learn how to use all those machines. Excellent. Another round of applause. Nice job. <laughs> you can head out that one. All right.